I really greatly appreciate everyone being here. My name's John Day. I'm representing the Stanford Neuromuscular Team, um, many of whom are also here. And uh, we're very excited to have you for what we are hopeful is our first of an annual series on uh, the, the new advances in neuromuscular medicine. As you are aware, I mean, there's a revolution taking place in neurology. And it's not just in pediatric neurology, it's not just uh, in neuromuscular neurology, but a lot of it is because of what has started in spinal muscular atrophy. Um, I think that it has taken the world of neurology by storm, and I think people are now aware of novel treatments. But what this uh, conference is set up to deal with is, is mainly the consequences of that. It's not just to bask in the glory of what's been done, but it's to establish a way to deal with it and to move into the future. Because what we're discovering is that with new treatments come new opportunities, but also new responsibilities and new issues. And I think many of you are aware of that. Um, so this is where we are. Um, for those of you who don't know the Stanford campus, the medical campus is right on the main campus, and if you have time and want to explore, I encourage you. It's a beautiful campus. You can easily walk across Campus Drive and head on over to the quad and see other elements on campus. Um, looking at just the, this got off, so I'm gonna just point that uh, this is where we are here uh, in the Li Kaxing building. And these white spaces are all new buildings. So this is the brand new pediatric hospital, which is now open, you can walk by. Uh, this is the new adult hospital that just opened uh, and you can uh, walk in and see what's going on there. And then uh, this is the new uh, neuroscience building that is not yet open, but is getting uh, quite close. Uh, for basic laboratory neuroscience. Um, and then our uh, adult clinical neuroscience is out here and the pediatric uh, clinic is over here. So uh, it's, a, it's all fairly compact, uh, but in separate buildings uh, that are a, an easy stroll from here if you have time. I wanted to give credit to where this uh, concept of this, this course originated. Uh, and that really is with the work done at uh, Columbia, uh, you know, uh, over the last couple of years in setting up a similar course. And so, uh, you know, I really give credit to Jackie Montez, who's one of our faculty members, but uh, for this course, but also was instrumental in setting up a similar course at Columbia that we're mirroring uh, with what we have done. And it really plays off a lot of the new advances in standards of care that have been uh, promulgated by many of the faculty members for this course. I also wanted to give uh, thanks uh, to all of our supporters. We've had really great support uh, from the pharmaceutical industry and we're excited to partner with them. We've been partnering with them in developing new treatments. We're partnering with them in novel treatments that are underway and we're excited to partner with them and with the Muscular Dystrophy Association in, uh, in this course, uh, because we do think that this is a long-term initiative. So thanks to Avexis, uh, makers of Zolgensma, Biogen, makers of Nusinersen, uh, Cytokinetics has a drug Reldeceptive in uh, trials, uh, Genentech Roche, uh, you know, with Rizdaplam recently accepted by the FDA for its application, uh, Ionis, the developers of Nusinersen, and Scholarock has a new compound that is being investigated in the Topaz trial for SMA. So you can see it's a very, very active space. And thanks again to the Muscular Dystrophy Association for help. So the, the course overall, <clears throat> as you'll see, we want you to understand the clinical perspective of SMA. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, suitable programs for rehabilitation. I mean, we're really emphasizing the importance of managing. These novel treatments do not cure or eradicate 
SMA in, in very real ways, what's happening is we're increasing the morbidity associated with spinal muscular atrophy because many fewer children are gonna be dying of the disease, many more are gonna be living with this long term, and we have to come up with ways of helping manage that. And then we'll talk about ways to monitor that treatment um, with outcome measures, and much of tomorrow will be focused on that because we have to come up with ways that these uh, uh, new treatments can be appropriately monitored. So I am listed as a course director, as is Carolina Tessie Rocha. So if you want to stand up and please. Um, uh, <laughs> please come and find us if you have questions or concerns or ideas for the future or other things. But I also wanted to give primary uh, credit here to uh, Sally Dunaway Young, who really was the instigator, initiator, organizer, and planner of this. So thank you. Thank and uh, you know, so Sally uh, worked with uh, Dr. Montez at Columbia in uh, the first two courses that they did there. And so we really had an experienced hand guiding us in setting up this course and couldn't have done it without her. The, you know, one of the real joys, I moved to Stanford about eight years ago and very, very quickly uh, was fortunate enough to get involved with the uh, PNCRN, the uh, Pediatric Neuromuscular Clinical Research Network and, um, and affiliated uh, sites. And it's been a true joy to work with uh, the people on this uh, faculty that includes members from that group and uh, really prominent members that aren't part of that group but are really uh, uh, at the high level of advances in terms of SMA. So we have really an, an impressive faculty for this course and I, it's tremendously exciting to have them here. I learn things from every one of them every, every time I hear them talk and I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoy the course uh, from that standpoint as well. Uh, the course, as you know, we're going to spend today really making sure we're all on the same place in understanding SMA, that we'll go through uh, understanding the pathophysiology and diagnosis and the new, new treatments, but then getting into elements of the disease um, after the break and ending up with a panel discussion uh, from uh, the patient population that is, has been living with these new advances. So that's today and tomorrow we'll spend, as I mentioned, going over uh, many of the outcome measures uh, that are really essential for going forward uh, in this space. So I thought it was fun to look at where people are from. So this is where attendees are from within California. So we have a pretty good spread uh, throughout um, much of California. Uh, and we're excited to work with California Children's Services to expand this number uh, going forward uh, so that if we can keep this going for multiple years, as is our intent, um, we, we really hope that we can uh, be a force for uh, education and, and awareness uh, uh, in that group and others. But we get people from outside of California as well, obviously not as many, but some people from around. This in part includes faculty members, so it's a little bit misleading, but it does include people from across the country uh, that got aware of, of what we're, we're doing here and are, are participating as, uh, as attendees. And we even have people from uh, uh, other, other countries. So we're excited to uh, expand this. Again, we think that there is a revolution going on and we need to do our part to help educate uh, the, the uh, neuromuscular neurology world in terms of how to deal with uh, what's happening. One of the things I want to spend some time on is this um, uh, audience uh, response system. So if you have a phone or if you have a laptop or if you have something, you can go on to this site and I'll give you some time to try to find it uh, and we'll do some audience response questions so that you can respond, uh, but, but I'll get you on there first. You'll see on that site that there, um, you will also be able to enter questions. So during any of the talks today, if you have a question come to mind, uh, please go ahead and type it in. 
And uh, we can take questions uh, during the question and answer period uh, so that um, you know, we don't have to do everything by mic. We will have microphones. We have them up, so you can do it the old school way as well. Uh, but uh, you can also just, as you're thinking of things, jot down a question and let us know what you want to talk about when we come to the Q&A period. OK, so we have some audience response questions, I think, set up. So just to get everybody uh, to be aware of where you're at, how close are you right now to the San Andreas Fault? So less than a mile, one to two miles, two to five miles, five to 10 miles, or greater than 10 miles. So that's how the system works. And people must be pulling out their Google Maps and figuring this out, <laughs> seeing, seeing what the responses are. Because the, the right answer is pulling ahead. I mean, I thought it was going to be closer, to be honest with you. It's just up Sand Hill Road. Uh, but if, if you actually figure out it's, a, it's, a, it's between two and five miles, it's, it's closer to three miles. So it's, it's, I, I thought it was you know, a half mile when I, first, when I first posed this question. Just, I was trying to make everybody f get a little bit anxious to wake you up this morning, that you're about to teeter over the edge. But, but uh, they tell us that the, the scariest earthquakes to come are more likely in the East Bay than on the San Andreas Fault. So, so I, I think we're OK. <laughs> all right, but I did want to also get some information, I think, for the um, all the faculty, but also I think people will be of inter have interest in figuring out who's here. I mean, who are the, the who did come to this? And so I do have some questions about that. So first off, what is your connection to spinal muscular atrophy? We didn't set this up um, with patients and family members in mind, but I know that there are some people that are both patients or family members and clinicians. So you can answer more than one on this one. You can, you can answer B and C, or you can be a pharmaceutical um, representative and a clinician. Um, but I think that's, that's instructive. I think that, you know, I know that our, our friends from uh, pharma that were helping put on this course were afraid that all we we're going to get is a, a room full of people from pharma. And that wasn't the intent. And uh, so I think you can see that, you know, three quarters of people are clinicians. So that's good. The rest of the questions are going to focus on that group that are the clinicians. And again, if you double dipped and you're a pharmaceutical company representative and a clinician, that's fair. Um, you can continue to respond. So of the clinicians, w can you list down and again, uh, which of these, I think this one is set up where you have to choose. You can't answer multiple uh, slots here. So we tried to have this one add up to a straight 100%. But um, I think for the faculty, you can begin to see who's here. So I think of that three quarters of the group, that's clinicians. Half of that group is physical therapists. A quarter or so is occupational therapists. And then we have a good slice of neurologists or physiatrists and some pulmonologists. I think, as, as will become clear, uh, taking a comprehensive, multi, multifaceted approach to dealing with SMA is critical. And so we do have to do this as a team. And I think that's what's represented in the group here. Um, how many patients with SMA have you seen? So some are new to the field and anticipating what's coming down the road, which is great. Most have seen relatively few. So this is not uh, the, the population that's most experienced, but obviously we have a spread of fairly experienced people as well. So again, if you consider that there are 200 people in the room and 75% uh, are clinicians and half of those have seen less than 10 uh, uh, more than half, almost two thirds, have seen less than ten people with SMA. I think this is great, you know. So we are reaching a, a group of people that, um, you know, really is eager to learn more about spinal muscular atrophy. But again, we view this as a model disorder in many ways, a prototypical disorder for what's coming down the pike in neuromuscular medicine. 
but also in many ways in neurology uh, more broadly. And getting a better sense of this, of the SMA patients you see, you can select any, this one, I think you can select more than one so that, you know, if, if you, you know, see infants, children, adolescents, and adults, feel free to uh, check all of them. Uh, but again, um, we're, we're kind of seeing a, a fairly clear distribution there. So um, even though uh, there's a large population of adults living with SMA, um, we really are just beginning to scratch that uh, need. And I think that we're increasingly aware of that, so I think it's great that we have a significant representative population of people that are clinicians seeing adults with SMA. So that's all I wanted to do to set this up, and it's my distinct pleasure now to move this forward with a talk by Dr. DeVivo, uh, who's the Sidney Carter uh, Professor of uh, Neurology and Pediatrics at Columbia, and obviously one of the deans of uh, spinal muscular atrophy, clinical care, and research who can walk us through the uh, pathophysiology and diagnosis of SMA. So, Dr. DeVivo, thank you so much for coming out from New York. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.